So here we are finally fixing the meaning of logic programs. So we have seen at the beginning that there are actually quite alternative, a bunch of alternative uh, characterizations of uh, the stable model semantics. And I've not even elaborated the 13 definitions of Vladimir Lipschitz just on the theoretical side of things. So what I've chosen to present to you up to now is the Redux based characterization. And this is nice because, well, first of all, it's the original one by Michael Gelfand and Vladimir Lifshitz. Also, it merely relies on sets and operators on sets. So, no logic. <laughs> and last but not least, I believe it can nicely derive from the procedural intuitions I've been giving you so far, although most of the attempts, of course, failed. And we are now to, to get the ultimate uh, definition. So, central to the ideas I presented at the last part of, uh, of the semantics, was that once we have actually guessed on Oracle gave us um, a solution candidate, we can actually reduce the logic program to a positive logic program. And now this can, is nicely captured by, as the reduct based semantics suggests, by the concept of a reduct. And here it is. So given a set of atoms X and a normal logic program P, the reduct is simply defined by the positive rules that more or less survive the evaluation of the negative body literals with respect to the set X. So as we did before, we evaluate, we, we, take, we look at all rules, evaluate their negative uh, body literals, and only if they are disjoint from X, we keep the rule, but only the, the rule that with the positive body literals. And this what we get then is a positive logic program. Okay, now we are back actually to what we studied intensely in, in well, part two, three, I don't remember. Uh, we know actually what the semantics of a positive logic program is. It's a set of consequences, it's the smallest set closed under the program, it's the smallest model for the logi logicians uh, among you. And so we, what we did is we can more or less with this concept, we can reduce the meaning, so to speak, or we can first of all reduce normal logic programs to positive logic programs, and then we know what to do. Okay, and that's it. This is the stable model semantics. But, well, as you see before we do that, just another view on, on the reduct. So one way to obtain this reduct is more or less to adapt what, what we've done before. You can ob obtain the reduct, uh, that is the positive logic program that is the reduct, from the normal logic program by deleting all rules that have atoms in the negative body that belong to X. And then we delete all the, all the remaining negative body literals from the rules that remain. Okay, in this way we obtain the reduct. And now that's it. We can define the stable model semantics. And before I do that, I should actually mention this. I don't know, I'm so excited about introducing to you the stable model semantics that keep in mind that when we do the reduct and we, we transform the program into a positive logic program, we only evaluate the negative body levels and they are then also um, more or less stripped of the program uh, that, that, is resu that, that results from this. So now, finally, with the reduct, we can define what a stable model is. And so again, the idea is we have a set X, this is the candidate model or the, the, the candidate set of atoms that you give me or I give you. And then we take this, this, uh, this set we, and our program, we reduce the program to the reduct. Uh, we compute the smallest uh, model or the smallest uh, set closed under, under this resulting positive program. And if this is what we guessed at initially, what I provided you as a candidate or you provided me, then that's a stable model and that's it. So a stable model is nothing else than solutions of this condition here. And this condition distills everything we have been doing so far, right? So again, I repeat myself now. So a set of atoms is a stable model of a normal logic program if it satisfies this condition. And what this means is, so X more or less is a solution candidate we need to verify. So we take our normal logic program and we reduce it with respect to X into a positive logic program. Then we compute all the consequences of this positive logic program. And if the result of this computation 
allows us to reconstruct our original guess, our x, then this is a stable model. And that's it. Well, now that we answered the question on the meaning of logic programs, let us examine a bit closer the result, that is, the stable models. So, one thing perhaps to note is, um, I was stressing this fact a little bit, so you give me a solution candidate, and I can verify then whether the solution candidate is actually a solution. So you give me the x, and then I can verify this condition here. And actually, I can verify this in polynomial time, right? So I can reduce p with respect to x in, po in polynomial time, just go through all the rules. In the same way, I can compute uh, the consequences also by applying one rule after the other. And at some point, I went over the rules and, uh, and I'm done. So polynomial this can be done, perhaps. Um, anyway, polynomial, and after all, I can check the equality uh, polynomial. So the whole condition can be verified in polynomial time. And this is a typical non-deterministic polynomial problem, an NP problem, right? So you give me a candidate and I can verify the candidate in polynomial time. So let's back, go back to the timetable example. You give me a timetable and I can check the timetable, right? Is there, are there overlaps between the courses? Is a person at, at the same time in, in two different courses? Is, so anyway, you give me a timetable and I can check whether this timetable is a solution in polynomial time. The difficulty actually is the non-determinism, is how to find, finally, all uh, the, the, the solutions. Because you have seen so far that the only way we could provide candidate is by enumerating all of them. And there are exponentially many. So, this is one of the challenges that we already see with the semantic characterization. How can we effectively compute the stable models without going over all candidates that are exponentially many in the worst case? Okay, I zip it again. This was just a remark on the side. To sum up a little bit properties of stable models, the first properties we will see more later on. As I mentioned, so a stable model in the end is the, the subset smallest, this Inclusion smallest set closed under the program reduced by x, which I think is obvious. But what is important, so in this construction, when you construct the consequences, each atom that is produced by this, and, and since every atom that is produced by this is also in x, each atom in x has also a proof from the positive program. So this intuition that we saw with, with, with positive programs at the beginning is still preserved and more or less each atom in a stable model also has a proof, has a justification, a certificate, has an explanation, right? Because this is hyped so much these days. So perhaps just to, and of course, just to satisfy the logicians among you, of course, uh, it is the, the stable model is also a set inclusion smallest model of the reduct, but keep in mind only of the reduct because the original program may not have a stable model, may have several minimal ones, and so this does not work. This only works with, with the reduct. Okay, so last but not least, since I dragged you through all this motivation on, on procedures and patches and things that failed, and I hope that, this, that you enjoyed the lessons that we draw from this, let's just see how, it could, how one could do this procedurally. In fact, the procedural counterpart to our mathematical characterization of a stable model is nothing else than the procedure that we developed in the last part, just that now I plugged in the notion of a reduct. Okay, let's, <clears throat> let's just have a look at this. So as before, we guess our solution candidate and keep in mind that this is a non-deterministic guess and if we want to do this um, in a deterministic fashion, we have to loop over all the potential candidates. And if we have n atoms in the head of the program, because we only have to look at what is in the head of, of, of the logic program, then this gives us uh, 2 to the power of n uh, potential uh, solution candidates. And we have to iterate about this. So this is more or less a way to compute it, but it's not very effective. Right? In the worst case, of course, one can't uh, um, escape this anyway, but uh, keep in mind that this is uh, a procedure that runs in exponential time. Okay, now I zip this and let's and, and, and I go back to the description. Now let's say our oracle gave us uh, a solution candidate. 
Now we use here the reduct of the program with respect to the guess. And this is now the, our original TP operator, which works on positive logic programs and only evaluates the positive body. Now the TP operator is just the same, just that here we now have uh, not the, a positive uh, program, and I refer to the original TP operator, but the reduct. And wherever we apply the operator, we apply it with respect to the reduct. Then we iterate here uh, over the x until we get a fixed point of the TP operator. And if what we have produced by our loop is the same as we uh, provided as a guess at the beginning, then great. We have a stable model, x or y, because well, it doesn't matter because they are, they are identical. And else we fail and we go to the next candidate. And we ask our oracle again to provide a better guess. Anyway, so this is just again to give you an intuition and to link things to the parts we did before. But well, this is definitely not something, this is definitely no role model necessarily for computation. The ingredients of this, yes, but the procedure as such is not really effective for computing stable models. Just think of a problem with 100, 1000, 10,000, a million variables, oh, oh, that won't work. Good, so this more or less closes the introduction and the quest for the stable model semantics of the logic programs. And now that we have the stable model semantics, we will do a, a bit more examples or more, some more examples and look at properties and more or less elaborate the concept a bit more in the remaining parts of the semantics section. Okay, stay tuned. See you.